Nevertheless, we are going to continue with the implementation of macro processor. In the last class, we have seen the important steps in the implementation of macro processor. There are four steps in the implementation of macro processor. In that, we have covered the first three steps in the last class. Now, we are going to see the last step in the implementation. That is nothing but algorithm for the implementation. Here, we have two algorithms for the implementation. One is two-pass algorithm and another one is one-pass algorithm. In today's class, we will be discussing about the two-pass algorithm. Before entering into the algorithm, let me give an overview of the first three steps in the implementation. The first step is specifying the problem. That means, suppose if we are implementing a macro processor or if you are implementing a macro processor, we have to know what are the basic functions to be performed by a macro processor. Stating these are calling as the specifying the problem step in the implementation. And the second step is specifying databases. To implement this algorithm, what all databases we require, we have to specify that in the second step. Most commonly and the databases what we are using in this implementation are argument list array, macro definition table and macro name table. Macro definition table is using to store your macro definitions and a macro name table is using to store the names of the macro and a pointer to the definition of that corresponding macro. Argument list array has two purposes. Uh, in the case of pass one, it will be substituting the dummy arguments with index markers. Whereas uh, in the case of uh, second pass ALA, it will be uh, matching the uh, index markers with the real arguments from the macro call. So now we'll move on to the two pass macro processor algorithm. As the name indicate, this particular algorithm requires two passes pass 1 and pass 2. First, we will see the flowchart for pass 1 of the algorithm. Here is the flowchart for pass 1. The input to the pass 1 is the source program which is containing macro definitions and macro calls. As the first step, what we have to do here is we have to initialize the counter values as one. The two counters with what we are using in this pass is macro definition table counter and macro name table counter. Macro definition table counter will point to the next available entry in the macro definition table that is MDC. Macro name table counter will point to the next available entry in the macro name table. That means in order to uh, get next entries from the MDT and MNT, we are using MDTC and MNTC counters respectively. So once we have done with the initialization, we have to read line by line from your source program or source card. Here, basically we are doing two tasks. When we are reading each line from the source program, we are checking whether it is a macro definition or not. If it is a macro definition, we have to store entire macro definition into the database called macro definition table. Suppose when we are reading the line, if that particular line is not a macro definition, then that particular line has to be copied into a secondary storage to be used by pass 2. So after copying that particular line, we have to check whether that line containing pseudo opcode is end or not. If it is not end, what we have to do? Again, we have to read the next line from the source program. Suppose if that is the end of your, uh, if that is, if that pseudo opcode is end, which means that is the end of your source program, then you can go to pass two. This is one section of your 
pass one algorithm that means read the line from the source program if it is not a macro definition store a copy into the secondary storage and check whether that line pseudo opcode is end or not if it is the end you can end that otherwise you can read the next line from your source program again when we are reading we are checking whether it is a macro definition or not so if it is a macro definition how can we recognize a macro definition each macro definition will be starting with the pseudo opcode macro so we have to check whether that is matching with the pseudo opcode macro if it is matching with the pseudo opcode macro it means the following lines are the macro definition and we need to store that into the macro definition table when we are storing the macro definition into the macro definition table database we have no need to store the pseudo opcode macro so move on to the next line of your macro definition so read the next source card or next source program line and immediately the next line following the pseudo opcode macro will be the line which is containing macro name and dummy argument from this we have to store the name of the macro and the pointer to the macro definition which is container which is containing the definition of the macro name so here we have to enter the name of the macro and the current value of mdtc what is the current value of mdtc always the mdtc value gives the next available entry in the mdt so we have to current at present that value is 1 which means the present or the current macro name uh, when we are storing that into the macro name table uh, the index to the definition of that macro will be 1 or what is the present mdtc value that will be the index to the definition of that macro name then these two values we have to enter in the mntc value of mnt table okay so i'll explain this part again we are here we are reading the second line of your macro definition that is nothing but the line which is containing macro name and dummy arguments whenever we are seeing this line the name of the macro and the pointer to the definition of the macro that is nothing but the current mdtc value has to be stored into the macro name table in the mntc position then we have done we have entered the macro name into the macro name table now we have to increment the macro name table counter by 1 because we have done one entry in the macro name table now the counter or the macro name table counter has to point to the next one for that uh, we have to increment by 1 so that next time we can enter the next macro name in the macro name table then after this we have to prepare argument list array for that particular macro name line preparing argument list array means what we have to uh, take the dummy arguments and we have to replace those dummy arguments with the uh, index markers then the entire line we have to copy into the macro definition table so we are taking the macro name instruction and that line and we will be copying into the macro definition table after preparing the argument list array preparing the argument list array is nothing but substituting the index markers with the uh, index markers for uh, each dummy arguments then suppose we have the dummy arguments arg1 arg2 arg3 arg1 will be replaced by hash1 arg2 will be replaced by arg uh, um, replaced by um, hash2 and arg3 will be replaced by hash3 then after that once we uh, substituted with the index markers that particular uh, instruction or the line has to be copied into your macro definition table so one entry we have made in the macro definition table now the macro definition uh, table counter has to point to the next value to point to the next value we have to increment macro definition table counter by 
Now again, so we have done with only the macroname line from the macro definition. Now move on to the next line. Next line is the first macro instruction. Read that line or read the next source program code. Then uh, when you are reading the first macro instruction from the macro definition, for each occurrence of the dummy arguments has to be substituted with the corresponding index markers. Then once we have substituted, the entire line has to be again stored into the macro definition table at the place of MDTC. After copying, we have to again increment the MDTC value by one to point to the next available entry in the macro definition table. Then when we are reading the next source program, we have to check whether that pseudo opcode is M end or not. If it is M end, which means what? It is the end of the macro definition. If it is not end of the macro definition means what? We have some more macro instructions inside the macro definition. So we have to expand those macro instructions also. For that, again, you have to go to the same step, read the next macro instruction and repeat the same steps. Those are uh, substitute each dummy arguments with the uh, index markers and copy that line and increment the macro definition table counter by one. And suppose if it is the end of the macro definition, you have done with the storage of macro definition into the macro definition table database. Now you can read the next source program line and check again, you can repeat the same steps. That means whether it is a macro definition, store into the macro definition table, or if it is not a macro definition, then just to copy that uh, source program line into a secondary storage to be used by pass through. And if you are ending at the, if you are matching with the end pseudo of code, it means what? It is the end of your source program. Then you can uh, end your entire pass one process and you can go to pass two. This is the explanation for the pass one flowchart. Now we are moving on to pass two flowchart. Pass to flowchart means what? The input will be output from the pass one. That is nothing but the copy of the source program. Now, read each line from your source program copied by pass one and check each, perform a match with operation code in the MNT, that is macro name table. That means we are checking any macro call is occurring or not. So if it is a macro call, which means that operation code will be matching with the macro name in the macro name table. In that way, we can recognize whether it is a macro call or not. If it is a macro call, we have to expand the macro call. Then otherwise, if it is not a macro call, again, the particular source program line, we can just copy into the uh, expanded source code file okay expanded source card file and check whether that line is containing end pseudo of code if it is end if it is containing end pseudo of code which means it is the end of the uh, source program you can um, produce the final uh, result here that i'll tell you otherwise if it is not the end pseudo of code again read the next line from the uh, source code uh, source card copied by pass one then again, we are searching whether it is a macro call and if it is happening a match with the uh, macro name table value, which means it is a macro call. Then if it is a macro call, what we have to do? We have to expand the macro. In order to expand the macro, we have to know where is the expansion for this particular macro name. From where will it get this? This will be getting from macro name table. So macro name table will be containing name of the macro name as well as the macro definition table index that it will be pointing to the definition of that particular macro name. And that index value, that is nothing but the index of the macro definition will be stored into a pointer is calling as macro definition table pointer macro definition table pointer points to the line or the instruction to be expanded next step. Then 
take the instruction from that and set up your argument list array. That means we have read the first instruction from the macro definition table and set up your argument list array. How can we set up the argument list array in the pass two? Uh, in the case of pass two, ALA will be containing the corresponding index markers and the real argument value for those corresponding index markers. Suppose hash one means if it is arg one, hash, sorry, hash one real value will be getting from the macro call. Then here after setting up the argument list array, that means we will be matching index markers with the real arguments from the macro call. Then when we are expanding, we will not put the macro name and dummy arguments containing line in the expanded code. So you can, you have no need to uh, expand that line. You can increment the pointer by one so that it will get the next line from the macro definition table. Uh, it will be the first macro instruction. For that, you can increment MDTP by one. Then get the first macro instruction from that. Suppose the first macro instruction is a one comma ampersand arc one. So what you have to do ampersand arc one has to be replaced by hash one. So substitute arguments from macro call. So hash one has to be substituted by uh, what is the real value we are passing. We suppose if you are passing data one, when I'm calling the uh, macro call, suppose uh, I'm passing data one, we had to substitute a one comma data one then we have to check whether it is a uh, read the next line and whether it is a uh, pseudo opcode mn hmm? if it is mn which means it is the end of the macro definition which means we have completely expanded the macro uh, if it is not mn write the particular at present what line we have write that present line into the uh, expanded source card and continue with the next instruction from the macro definition table which will be providing by the pointer mdtp and suppose if it is the macro end we have to read the next line from the source card uh, which is copied by the pass one and again do the same thing search for the macro name if it is not a macro name copy the entire line into the expanded source code check whether it is containing end pseudo opcode if it is containing end pseudo opcode you can finish the execution here and the output of the pass 2 will be the expanded source file without any macros that's all about the pass to algorithm so in to today's class we were discussing about the pass one and pass two uh, flowchart for the implementation of macro processor in tomorrow's class we will be discussing about one pass algorithm for implementing macro processor thank you thanks for watching